Then we were sitting there chatting, and then the whole time we were just talking about Pearl, man. <laughs> oh, you lying to me. <laughs> what is this guy saying? <laughs> yeah. oh, I love this girl, man. Yo, this this interview bag. is going to go left. <laughs> What does this guy say? You're okay. like, I want to get a bag, like in front of kids, hey, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you, MacGyver. Podcast and chill. Matt G, the ghost lady, and Len Moleko. And uh, what do you mean, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to it. Hey, what are we calling you now? Because you know you said uh, we call you by whatever song is popping at the moment. Hey, man, I don't know. Mr. What? Mr. Minanawe. Mr. Mr. Minanawe. Mr. Red Mike. That one is stuck, actually. Yeah. Yeah, people call me Mr. Red Mike. Jeez. I, th- I think that one is forever. It just shows how long I haven't seen you because for me, it's still Mr. Donald in denial. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I get it. You can't play this now. It's you been a while. Bro. Me, you know what I mean? Man, I lost your number, bro. Come yeah. on. It's not like I just decided, okay, I'm not calling you. That's why you actually got the call from the office and not from me. But anyway. Yeah. It is what it is. So I was saying, off it, like, we don't have enough time because yeah. uh, you got something, you got another commitment that you got to I've got, got another to. commitment, yeah, man. I'm, so I'm, on a, I'm, a, I'm on a promo schedule. Okay. Yeah, hectic one. So yeah. we're going to get straight into the shits, my dog. Let's go. What shit is this? <laughs> <laughs> um, do you remember the first time we met? Jeez, Maji. Mm. Vana, actually, to be honest, I think if there's one person who, like, most of our moments I will never forget because, you know, you, uh, I don't know, you are tied to a very important part of my life. Oh, wow. You understand? So the first time I met you, I remember, like, it was actually yesterday. Yeah. 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 It was at, um, at Red Pepper. Mm. Uh, I don't remember the year. Yeah. Um, however, I was there with my group back then. I don't know if you remember the group. Yeah. Uh, Muso. Remember yeah, Muso? Muso, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we came, yeah. three boys. Yeah. We sang. And then you you were um, uh, you were hosting Crazy. Crazy, yeah. Yeah, with a very beautiful woman at the time. Yes. Remember who she is? Pearl Mudiadi. Yes, Pearl Mudiadi. <laughs> you must say it right. Okay. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. So I don't think I can ever forget. Because that day is probably one of those days that kind of like, Started a certain journey in my life, and then was it the first time you met her that day? I met who? Pearl Media. Oh yeah, it was just like it was the first time I met you. Oh, it was wow. the first time I met her. Yeah, that's okay. crazy, man. Because yeah. my recollection, the first time we met, that I remember vividly. Yeah. Um, Cleo was shooting a video. Yes, yes. And then um, we met up, but you hadn't blown up yet. I think denial hadn't come out yet. No, 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 no. Yeah. It wasn't, I wasn't even making house music then. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You're yeah. making jazz or something yeah, like that, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then we had a chat. But that wasn't the first time we met. But that's what I'm saying. That's, the that's what you remember. If that's yeah. my first time. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And then we were sitting there chatting, and then the whole time we were just talking about Pearl, man. <laughs> oh, you lied to me. <laughs> what is this guy saying? <laughs> yeah. oh, I love this girl, man. Yo, this this interview is going to go left. <laughs> What does this guy say? You're okay. like, I want to get a bag, like in front of kids, hey, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you, MacGyver. What, what happened with you guys, man? What do you mean, what happened? Okay, so you guys met, you were friends, you dated, yeah. on and off. I mean, I... Did, did I ever say that we dated? I think everybody knows that, we d- that you dated. I mean, those that know, know what they know. But the thing with me, I don't know if you're aware of this, um... MacGyver, I have, I've actually never ever publicly came out and said that I dated anybody. Oh, wow. Okay. If you, if you, uh, are you aware of that? No, I think you just made me realize that. I've actually never. Yeah. Yeah, so there's never been a record of me on any interview or, or maybe, uh, I don't know, an Instagram post. Or a Twitter post. Well, it starts con- now. Confirming it that. It starts now. Can you confirm or deny? I mean, what I can confirm is that, you know, um, she is one of the most beautiful women in the world. Yeah. 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 That's it. South Africa's got beautiful women. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're going to do me like that, bro. I'm going to do you like that, bro. <laughs> I don't know. You're going to give me a PR I'm answer. A, no, bro. Like, it's just, I don't know. Like, I've always, you know, and I know like a lot of people have had this problem with me, right? Yeah. Um, you know, they, they, they try to get in a little closer, 
I try to get in a, a little bit more deeper in, in, in my dating life and, and all of that. And for me, I just always kind of felt like it clashes with what I'm trying to achieve. Which is what? You know, I'm trying to build a music legacy, you know, that is not consumed by a lot of personal things. Because you see, and, I, and I've seen this happen with a lot of artists, a lot of what happens in your personal life impacts your career sometimes. And sometimes it can impact it positively, mm. but a lot of the times it impacts your life very negatively because instead of people focusing on what you're about, which is what you were introduced in the industry for, which is your talent, your music, um, people start focusing too much on who you're dating and, and what, what you guys are doing, who, okay, now that you're dating this person, why were you seen at a club in a corner with Boiti now? Mm. Why are you and Boiti too close? Mm. Now they're taking your girlfriend. Now is You know what I mean? It's just, it's just things, things get really messy. And for me, I don't think that like, I'm that type of a person to follow it through. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? That's yeah. why I'm not very controversial because I just can't follow through that whole life of being a controversial person or, or an artist, you know? But then, Donald, you shouldn't have been an artist because you're a public figure. And yes, obviously, yes. we want to know who you're dating. Of course, and this is the reason why I have decided to control the narrative. Okay. And this is how I control the narrative. You'll never see me um, taking a picture with the person I'm dating and posting them on social media on some, yeah, you know, my love for you is this. I'll send them an SMS. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Let them know, your baby, you know what I'm saying? And I mean, and, and it's not to say that I don't live my life the way I want to. I actually do, you know. Um, I do believe that as a public figure, if you control the things that you share with yeah. the people, yeah. that kind of, you are able to take control of your story the way you want to. People are not always going to be on your case. Um, because at the end of the day, I am aware that people are very interested yeah. in who I do. So I mean, what who, I do with who? <laughs> <laughs> what I do with who, you know? Yeah. Um, however, it, it, it just doesn't work out, man, for, for what I'm trying to achieve. Like, it's just, that's just a lot. And, and sometimes it's like, it's not that deep. Like, so other people, I'm sure some people on your comments are going to say, ah, but Donald, why are you being so cagey? It's not that deep. Yeah. You know, blah, 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 just live your life, do your thing, whatever. whatever. But, you know, when, 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 when Ish hits the fan, yeah. I'm the one that has to deal with, yeah. with everything, you know? You know, I'm glad you, you brought this up because yeah. I have a hard time um, separating the artist mm -hmm. from their personal life. I.e., for example, R. Kelly. Mm -hmm. You know, love the music. Mm -hmm. Guy is trash. Totally. You understand? Absolutely. You bring it back home, mm -hmm. you've got the situation that just arose a few weeks ago with yeah. um, Java. Yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. How do and you, that's terrible. You know what I mean? How do Absolutely. you as an artist, how, how do we navigate through that? I think, first of all, one of our biggest issues as artists is that we, as soon as we get into this thing and start catching some fire, um, a little bit of hype, some hit songs, some money, a bit of fame, we start kind of being confused, man, about who we are. Because now you've got the streets telling you of who you are or who they think you are. Mm. They see you every single day, you're driving nice cars, you 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 wearing nice clothes, mm. nice shoes, expensive. Everything is just like life is just looking amazing, right? And two years back, life was different altogether. You you don't know how to program yourself or how to get comfortable into your new life, mm. and and you start acting up. You know what I mean? Yeah. We act up. We we do whatever, and we forget that at the end of the day, we are human beings. What's gonna happen if this music career thing? ends tomorrow who yeah. am i yeah, yeah, yeah you know so what i try to do is i try to separate me being donald in the music industry with me being donald at home because you know with my family with with my girlfriend with because at the end of the day bro i can't you know you can't be a celebrity every single minute of your life it's impossible you know because then you're not going to be able to live with people you can't yeah. you know so i i think a lot of us lose the human part and we live in 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 the, the the celebrity you know type of noise and 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 we make a lot of mistakes in that but, regard but I, I think you're missing my question yeah what i'm trying to say is that right now um 
Do you still listen to Java's music? Do I still listen to Java's music? Um, I mean, it's, 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 it's a tricky one for me, you know. Um, what I will say, though, is that any man who abuses a woman needs to answer. Yeah. You know, and they need to deal with the repercussions thereof yeah. of, of what they've done. So I'm hoping to see how the story is going to develop. But for me, I think artists need to remember that they're human beings mm. at the end of the day. It goes back to that. Yeah. You're not just a, you know, a famous guy with money and you think you can just do whatever you want to do. You're still a human being. Yeah. So take care of that side of your life too. As much as you're taking care of your career side, take care of how you interact with people, how you interact with your girlfriend, yeah. how you interact with your brother, how you interact with your mother, how you interact with just maybe, I don't know, a security guard. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Try to remember that you're still a human being and treat people with respect so that they can treat you back with respect. Because it's, it's a weird time we're in because like now, um, here's Donald, makes great music. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then... His personality is trash. So, yeah. what do you do? Because like Donald makes good music. Yeah, that's what I'm trying. I'm trying to understand. Like, okay, let's take forget you're an artist. Yeah, that's why I bring up like you know R. Kelly because I'm sure you're a fan of his music. I was for the longest time. You know, so yeah. what do you do? Do you still listen to his? No, music? No, no, I don't. You understand at all because I think it's 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 it's, it's with, with reasonable doubt that it's just a terrible. He's just a terrible person. It all. He's sick in many ways, you know, in, 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 all level possi- in all levels possible. And for me, um, as a man, I can't, you know, I've got my own morals, you know. There's certain things that I believe in and, yeah. and, and I, can't, I can't vibe with that. Mm. I can't vibe with that at all, you know. Um, and I'm, I'm that type of a person. Whenever I can't vibe with you, with your energy as a person, I just I But just then cancel. what if he says what you said in the beginning, that listen, forget about my personality and what I do behind closed doors. Mm-hmm. Just listen to me for the music. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. But that's what you want. Yeah, but here's what I'm saying to you. First of all, this guy was doing these things. Mm. And first of all, they were wrong things. Mm. That's the first thing you need to think about. They were wrong things. Mm. And it's not like he was hiding himself at all times. Some of these things he did just, you know, very, you know, he, he... Basically, it would be very easy for someone to come out and say, oh, by the way, do you know what this guy is doing? Mm, mm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. That's the first thing. For me, or the reason why I'm saying that I don't want to be, you know, that type of artist where people get too much into my personal life, it's just, just that. I just don't want people to focus too much on what I'm doing in my kitchen mm. and what type of food do I eat, what time do I go to bed, and what type of underwear am I wearing? You know, it's things like that. I'm not, I don't mean with regards to like heavy things like that. And don't get it twisted, bro. Like all of us have, have, skeleton, have, have skeletons. But I mean, we live know? in an age where I know what uh, Cardi B had for lunch yesterday. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know the latest song. Yes, and, 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 that's, and that's where it gets tricky with the type of artists that we are. I mean, I think social media is very vast. You can use it for different things. Um, people have kind of noticed that you get a lot of clout when you share a lot of personal things, yes. or things that are happening. In the, so they they then decide that you know they're going to share that to try and get some likes and some views, and then try to sell music in the process, mm. or to try and get brand associations with that. But I am one of the artists who choose not to do that. Mm. I don't think my reality world is interesting mm. enough. I don't. I just don't think that. Is something that I want to share with, with the world, you know. Because at the end of the day, as artists, we do have choices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. you do have a choice of what type of artist you want to be or how you want to be, be remembered. remembered. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then what happened with you and Cleo? Because at that time when we met, yeah. hey, a lot of shit happened when we met. Eh? Sure, <laughs> right. Yes. You were with Cleo, and like you said, you were busy doing jazz. This yeah. is before you jumped onto house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, to be honest... You know, I, 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 it was a very confusing time in my life um, because when I signed with Cleo, I immediately thought that I was going to be a star. And I thought it was going to happen immediately. Like, I thought it was in a matter of a year and a half at most. Naturally, because DJ Cleo yeah. was the biggest star at the Forget time. Forget that. Every artist that he was signing on his label 
was going was becoming a big artist oh, after that right yeah so i was like okay well hey guess what it's my i'm time. signed to wheel of steel productions it's my time it's gonna happen and unfortunately it didn't work out that way because um and, and i think maybe it was because he was also trying a new thing in his label where he's having a soul artist you know uh because almost every artist that he had was was a quieto artist or someone that made more youth music mm. right mm. And I came in and I was a you know a real singer who made you know recorded with a live band and and I think that was more of something he was also kind of trying to venture into. Yeah. It was an untapped market. It was an untapped market for him and yeah. for the label. Yeah. And it didn't work out, bro. And, and 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 don't get it twisted. I had you know I had days when I really felt like you know I wasn't getting the attention that I deserved from the label and you know. And we would have those conversations, you know. Sometimes we would argue. Who was uh, at the label at the time? It was me, uh, Cleo, DJ Wat Wat, mm. actually. Um, who else was on there? No, I think it was just the three of us at oh, the time. Okay. Yeah, most of the artists had left. Like, it was right after after, after um, um, Bricks left. Yeah, Bricks. Yeah, yeah. so right after le- uh, Bricks left. Um, and... I just I, there were times when I felt like maybe I wasn't getting enough attention, but also it's because I didn't understand how the music industry worked, you know. Um, so what happened was after um, I think a year and a half of the album being released, and I didn't get a music video, also for my single. I guess also even with him, he was trying to figure out whether or not this was working. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, he wasn't yeah. sure, and, yeah. I, and I can understand. Mm. Now I understand. At mm. the time, I was mad. I was angry, mm. and I was like, "Ah, oh, bro, like I'm never a music video." Why are you not shooting a video for me? You know, <clears throat> but now that the the roles have reversed, have, have reversed. Mm. Now I became now I became him because I now started my own label mm. and I started kind of now understanding how the industry worked. I actually understand what he was going through because the truth of the matter is that my album was not moving, bro. You know, the songs were not the songs were not playing on <laughs> the radio. To be blunt, to be blunt, like uh, my album was not moving. I don't I don't remember how many <laughs> copies I sold of that album. <laughs> This guy's laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> but it was hard, man. I um we I called him once. Here, here's what, what what actually happened. Very interesting thing with how I left the label mm. was that I thought about how he interacted with everyone that left. It almost kind of felt like with with every single artist there was there was animosity and you mm. know they were fighting with him and you know bad blood. There was bad blood. You know, um, it just never, it, it was never a situation where he would leave and it would be, you know, amicable, amicable yeah. you know. And I was like, no, I don't want to go down like mm. that. Because I think by that time I was woke enough to also realize that at the end of the day, I don't think closing this door would be a great idea. Just a because, small industry. Yeah, just because I feel like he didn't do me right mm. or I feel like he didn't push me enough. And I need to do right. And, and also, I had a lot of respect for him, bro. Mm. You know, I had a lot of respect for Cleo. I think Cleo is one of the most disciplined, most talented human beings I ever met. Mm-hmm. And he taught me a lot about the music industry without even realizing he was wow. teaching me. So I said, you know what? I'm going to try to have a, a proper conversation with this guy, sit him down. So it was kind of like you're Harvard. What's that? Harvard, like you being with Cleo. It was like you going to school. Yeah, yeah. You know? That's yeah. exactly what it is. Mm. Um, I called him up. We sat on the table. And I said... Bro, I'm very frustrated. I can't pay my rent. I can't do anything, man. I'm just, I'm in Bramfontein and I'm frustrated. You know, I'm just one of those kids in Bramfontein, mm. hungry. Mm. And things are, not, things, things are not working out. This, is, this was before Great Dane. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know Great Dane, what it is, right? That was way before that. Yeah. And I was like, bro, I, I, I feel like I can, I can try this differently. I feel like I can try this on my own. So please let me go. Give me... You know, a clearance. Um, I I think I have I have a plan. Mm. You know, and bro, believe it or not, I I was surprised because I thought he was gonna go crazy and say, Nah, what are you talking about? You're not going anywhere. Nah, but he was like, Mbana, if you are 100 percent sure that you you know what you can do better, or at least you you've got an idea of what you can do on your own, I totally understand. But as for me, I did everything that I can. Well, to his defense, it's not like you were selling. You know? No, I wasn't. So I, I wasn't. And he, and he did his best. And he, I mean, he introduced me to everyone I know. Oh, okay. That was another thing, too. Yeah. So I thought, okay, you know what? 
actually know quite a lot of people. Mm. I can take my phone right now and call some people to connect me to this person, to their radio station, to do, 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 because of him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this on my own. And I was like, I'm fine. It's all good. Don't worry. Call the office. They'll do a letter for you. Like, it was really that small. When did you formulate that plan to say, okay, cool. I'm with Willis Steel. Broke. It's not happening. I got to make a move. Like, when, what, do you remember that day? I, remem- I don't remember the day exactly. But I, I think it was in 2011. Or 2011. Early to 2011, actually. Um, I didn't have a plan, though. You can't... See, when you're frustrated and hungry, you can't have, like, a perfect plan. The only thing you know is that the next thing you want to do is leave the label. And then the next thing that you know in your head is that, okay, then I, then, then I have to go hustle. I don't know what... But this industry is hard. Mm. You know, you can't just make perfect plans and then be able to execute. It just doesn't work that so way. So when you left the label, you didn't know... I, left, I didn't know what else do. I was going to do. I, you I wasn't, knew you needed to leave. I knew that... No, 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 no. But you see, here's the thing. You need to remember, when you're an artist who's signed, you can't just do whatever you want. Mm. I didn't have that leverage. And, and I'm, I'm respectful. I'm a very respectful yes, person. Yes. I, I wasn't just... Because you know what, what other artists do, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They continue doing their own thing, book their own art, uh, gigs, book their own recording sessions while they're still on a contract. Wow. I couldn't do that. Mm. So I felt like maybe what I do need to do to feel more free to do whatever I want to do and maybe to start being able to formulate my future, I need to get out of the contract first. And that's why you're still cool with Cleo. To that's why we're still cool to this day. Mm. Like, he literally, he still calls me Morena. Like, he called me Morena wow. many, many years ago. How is he, man? Fuck. He's good, man. He's good. He's a legend, bro. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a legend. That, that's, you know, you know when they say, happy to, that's, you know, that's Cleo. Yeah. That is Tani Soma's wife. That is, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that's when you are in a different level altogether. You, you know? think you're on that um, level? No, but I think I'm, I'm very close. I think I'm working towards Because you've been that. in the game for, for, for a while, while my yeah. dog. I, I've been, actually, I was celebrating 10 years this year. Nice. Yeah, 10 dog. years as a solo artist because the first song Cleo actually dropped for me was uh, Know You Better in 2009. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So now we're in Bram, we broke. Um, is this when you decide, okay, let me try this house thing? Um, this is exactly the time. Actually, actually, before I left Wheel of Steel Productions, we had already started talking about hey man how about we just try to dabble into the house mm. because i had done about two songs on two previous dj cleo albums mm. so i knew that i could do house music but obviously i didn't see that as like the core genre for me for me as donald um so as soon as i left and i got my clearance i was like okay cool who can I meet? You know, I, I used to visit like different studios and you know, and one person introduces you to the next person, and then you meet this producer and that producer and then and then one day, um a friend of mine by the name of Lagosh, I know some people in the industry in the streets know Lagosh. Yeah. Uh, Lagosh uh, was also recording and then he took me to this one studio um that um was owned by a guy by the name of Chris J. So Chris J is a um a producer from Ghana mm. who's been living in South Africa for a very long time. Yeah. So I went to the studio session just as a, as a guy with Kishayle around. Yeah, le, yeah. Le, 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 le and then, you know, I'm listening to this guy, you know, play some beats. And then he's also recording some new stuff. And I was like, God damn, who's this guy? This guy's talented. Like, mm-hmm. this guy is so talented. And I thought, something just said, hey, man, here's a studio. This guy owns the studio. If you have a chat with him, you guys might be able to, to do something, you know, on a different day. Mm. That's exactly what happened. I took his number called him on, on a different day, went to the studio, we started making some music. Is he the one who produced... Uh, He's the one that produced the whole album, The uh, Train of Denial. Love. Denial. Yes. Wow. He produced Denial, he produced I Deserve. Wow. He produced yes, Over deserve. the yes. Moon. Over the Moon. All, bro, all the big yeah. Donald hits. Yeah. Um, Chris J produced... Um, the, actually, I Deserve was started by another guy by the name of Douglas. Um, so it was just a beat, and then he came in and like put it together, made it a, a, a song. Who was the song about? Okay, okay. Interesting story. <laughs> you know, no names mentioned yeah. for obvious reasons, right? Yeah. There's a, um, 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 so, so after I had this bad breakup from, from, you know, this one amazing woman that I was dating, and then I think after a year, I met a new girl, um, and I fell hard mm. for that girl, mm. you know? I was with that girl for like a year and a half, two years. I even introduced that girl to my parents. I took wow. her home, bro. Damn, dog. I took her home. I was driving this little Corsa of mine. 
that my mother helped to buy. Because at the time, I didn't have enough money to buy my own car, you know. Yeah. Um, so I remember taking her home, and I thought to myself, I think for the first time, I can safely say I have moved on from my ex-girlfriend. Because I was struggling to get over my yeah, ex-girlfriend. Yeah, it's always though. tough, bro. Like, it's always I tough, was so bro. in love with that woman. And I thought there's no way that I'd be able to move on without her, right? But I meet this girl, and she brings this excitement in my life. And I was like, here I am. I mean, see, I've always had this issue of going in too hard with mm. relationships. Like, kikena ne. with everything. Mm. So, fall in love with this girl. Everything's great. She lives in the Val. So I used to travel Joburg to the Val every week, my brother. Yeah. At that time, I'm doing backing vocalists. I'm a backing vocalist at the time. So I'm doing, doing backings for, for Zonke for Kelly Kumalo sometimes, for, for Kuela Tebza. So I was making a little bit of money. And yeah, she must have had some fire coochie, eh? <laughs> 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 to drive to the farm, my nigga. <laughs> but uh, all I know is that I used to, I don't know what it was. <laughs> but I used to drive. Yeah. I used to drive from Joburg mm. to the Val every single week to go fetch that girl, man. Mm. And, you know, whatever she needed, you know, I would take my last money in Fana baby something you know yeah. pay the bills if you need to you know but i have to be honest man it wasn't it wasn't easy mm. because in my head i'm thinking okay you know what i found this girl and i think this is the girl that i want to be with so i can introduce it to my parents mm. i do that but i some of my family members did not click with her as well oh how can you not like pearl bro everybody likes pearl no man it wasn't Pearl. <laughs> this guy. It was. <laughs> oh my gosh. Her oh, name was definitely Pearl. Oh, you was, were was definitely Pearl. not Pearl. Eh? You were getting over Pearl with her. So, what happened oh, was, God. I. I um, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> hey, but this guy's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I take her home. Everything's cool. And I'm thinking, okay, Shab, I'm in love. All is great. It's 2011. Um, my career looks like, you know, yeah, there's, yeah. there's some movement. Yeah, yeah. I found some guy you know, that has money and he's like, yo, I'm going to put money in your, in your career. Everything's going to work out sharp. And then one night, I go to, I remember it was a night when uh, there was South Africa. There was, what's, what's, this, what's this show, man? Big Brother South Africa. Big, big Brother. Who's yeah. that dude that used to have a permit? And then he won. He, 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 no, no, he didn't win. That so year. Penduga. No, 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 no. no this guy that's playing on the Queen right now. Oh, I don't watch the Queen, bro. He's like Kaladish. He's got like... Okay, but let's say you we know, know him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so this know. dude had just come out of out of a, a big brother. And we knew each other. So he introduced him and he called me up. He's like, man, I'm having a party at, uh, at, at, at Kong. I don't know if it was still called, called Kong or whatever. Oh, Harem or whatever. Ro- yeah, yeah, yeah. I went through Mvana. Everything's great. I'm alone. You know... I have a little bit of fun, and then I decide, okay, like I always do, you know, from 2 o'clock up to 2, I go home. I'm mm-hmm. one of those, because I don't drink, so yeah. I just, I, I don't stay in the club for too long. Yeah. So I decided to get into my car, now I'm driving home, Vanna. Everything's great. You know, I'm upbeat about my life, and then from nowhere, <laughs> car accident. Poof. Dang. Bro, like, all alone. Yeah. No car, no other car involved. I just lost control of the car. I don't know why. I'm sober. And you weren't pulling a kanya. Because oh. you sold, but you don't drink. What, what are you talking about? What happened? <laughs> Never mind. What could, could <laughs> <laughs> so, Mvana, there I am. I'm confused. I'm like, damn. I just had a car accident. This is my first car accident. Damn. I just had a car accident. What is going on? Am I dead? Like, I, that's, these are the things that are, that are going in my head, right? Bruh, like, I just hit a wall, like a, mm. a wall of some house. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I don't know what's going on. I got out of the car, started running. Shit. Have you ever had a car accident? Yeah, plenty. Do you know? Plenty. <laughs> <laughs> plenty. Yeah, right, you should, be, you should be very happy that you're still alive. Yeah, I've seen life. Um, you started running. I started running. Because you know what a car accident, obviously it depends on what, what type of accident you have, but you kind of like go crazy for a little for a second. Mm. Like you lose. You don't know where you are. You don't know what's, what's going on. Mm. I started running, but, uh, and then and then I stopped, and then I looked back. I'm like, hold on, that's my car. Yeah. I just had a car. And then everything starts coming back. Yeah. I'm like, damn, I just had a car accident. Yeah. Like, now I don't know what to do. I'm trying to stop people on the road. Damn, dog. Um, 
to take me to the hospital. Like something must just happen, you know. And then one of one of one of one of the, actually a lady stopped. A lady stopped and helped me. Took me to the nearest hospital. And um, while I was there, I was busy. I was because I was, luckily my phone is still working, so I'm busy trying to call my girlfriend. And uh, she's not picking up. Send her a message. She's not picking up. Early in the morning, um, she sends back a message. She's like, "What's wrong?" I'm like, no, I've been trying to get a hold of you. I'm at the hospital. Cause I slept at the hospital because yeah. I had a car accident. She's like, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. And then that's it. That's all she said. Wow. And I'm like, so what? When are you coming? She just never said anything after that. She didn't respond. I called again. She didn't respond. I even got discharged from the hospital. That's crazy, dog. Went back home. She called me after two days. So after two days, after I left... She called me, and she's like, I'm so sorry. Can I please explain what happened? Blah, 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 blah. too many stories. And I was like, nah, I'm not, I'm not trying to hear it. Damn, dog. I was done, dog. I so, was done. I so, was totally done. Sounds like you were the side nigga. Bro, I can't tell you what the situation was. All I thought was we were in love, you know, because mm. I was that type of a guy, you know. Mm. I'm the crazy in love type of guy, you know. So do you, do you I think, thought that I was getting there from her. Do you think you're unlucky with love? Um, I mean, I think that there could be that also. Um, I, I, I can't tell you what it is because I always try to give the best that I can in, in a relationship. You wear your um, heart on your sleeve. I, I wear my heart on my sleeve, you know. Mm. However, I am stubborn too at mm. the same time. So I also just can't take nonsense yeah. from anybody. So I, um, I, I just, I broke up with her. That day I actually never wanted to see her after that. But and big, that, that's where the song came from. But big shout I was about to say big shout out to yeah. you. Otherwise, I, we wouldn't have had the song. I wrote song. the song a week after that. So as soon as I started feeling, because I slept the whole week at home, um, still trying to kind of, you know, process what happened to me and just trying to get better, you know. Yeah. Um, luckily, there was not, nothing was broken. It was just, uh, I think I was more traumatized. Um, I got better and then I went into the studio. Um, I wrote that song. We wrote that song in one, one hour. Wow. Yeah, one hour that song was done. And uh, does she know it's about her? Yeah, she does. Have you met her since? Um, I saw my ex for the first time after many, many years, probably a month and a half ago, in the VAR. She's still in the VAR. Hey, she's still in the VAR. She's still in the VAR. Where she belongs. (laughs) (laughs) Don't be so cold, man. You're cold. But you know, I've, I, I, I'll, always, I'll tell you this, and I think, and I'm glad that I never did this. You know, I was very mad at that time, and when I started blowing up, they would ask me, that I would tell the story, and they would ask me who she is, and, and I never, I refused to say her name, mm. because I was like, that's going to, to put her in a very compromising situation. I don't, don't want to do that, you mm. know, not with her, her friends or her family. I just don't want to put her in that type of situation, and, and I'm glad that I did, because we saw each other, and she actually, I think she's got a lot of respect for me for, wow. for how I took the whole thing. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, man, I, I just don't want to have that type of thing where now you and your ex is just like hate each other. And it's like. You're such a gentleman, dog. Where do you I get do that my from? Best. I think probably for my mother. Nah. Yeah, I think, I think my mother is the type of person who every time when I think about going out out of direction and just start acting up and all of that, I think about her first. She's, you know, I wonder if she will be okay with that. Mm. And if the answer is no, then, then I know that I'm doing, I'm doing the wrong thing. Shit, man. We've yeah. got about 10 minutes left, man. Yeah. Tell me, how did the Idols gig come along? That's a big gig. Idols. Um, I actually just got a call. Yeah. I got a call um, from, from the directors, and they just told me that they, they wanted me to come on. Actually, how the Idols thing, initially, the, the, the mentorship job, how that came about was that they called me up to come and be a guest judge mm. for one episode mm. for for one of the um, um, the, the, the the auditions, mm. the Cape Town audition. So mm. I did that and I aced that. I killed that. And I had so much fun, bro. Like you don't understand. Idols is probably one of the best things I ever did yeah, in my life, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. Because I think I am very passionate about young talent and your craft. You know my craft. Singing. I think singing is really what I was brought on the, in, on this earth to do and to see another young person with a dream try out and say, I'm ready for the world. You know, for me, I know what that feels like, you know, Mm. to want to be heard um, and to get that opportunity, you know, that step into the right direction. So for me, I felt like that job was God sent. Um, So after doing the, um, the, 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 after being a guest judge, they called me back to say that they wanted to give me um, a one season contract to be a mentor. So I would then mentor the, the contestants every single week prior to to the show and on saturday i would also come in and do final touching 
Um, I mean, Stefano touches on the uh, uh, mentoring them to prepare them for the for the Sunday shows. And how much were the numbers on the paycheck for that? I mean, the numbers were not bad at all. Nah. I have to give. I, I I honestly have to say shout out to 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 the company, to the production company. Because Who's the highest paid? Um I wouldn't writers. know. Ne? I wouldn't Who do you know. think, though? They don't put us in one room for us to discuss how much we're going to get paid. <laughs> <laughs> but who who do you think is the most paid then? I think so, Measy, man. You think so? He's the star of the show. Why do you think that? That is Randall, maybe Randall, because he's been there the longest. Yeah. But Samizi, so because he's the star of the show, man. You think so? Yeah, so Measy is fine. I think having been part of the show, I started looking at the show very differently from mm. how I looked at it from the outside. I think... I, th- I think that show is just, I think every single person, you know, especially the judging panel, I think they, dif- they bring very different things, and that's why they've got that job, yeah. you know? But I haven't like, watched it in years, so I'm the wrong person to ask. Yeah, yeah, but I think, I think for me, man, that's just such a, it's a well-oiled machine, mm. and, and I'm always going to be grateful for the opportunity of Because my show. thing with shows like that, singing shows, it's like once you've seen one, you've seen them all. So it's like uh, not necessarily. It is because it's remember, remember, you get you. Most important thing about the show is that you get you discover new talent, mm. and the talent is never the same. You discover new people every single season. I think. I mean, look at what's what's happened. I'm sure you've seen on social media this season. Um, some of the new talent that was discovered was the twins. Yeah, I saw the twins. And the, the twins doing something like, with the twins. The twins totally took over the timeline mm. because there was always something interesting about them. Okay. Yeah. So there's always something interesting. Why do you think every single season it feels like it's the biggest season? I get you. Yeah. I get you. And people, and I think people just love to root. For someone, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and 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 we are very we are talent driven um, um, country. So having done idols, being in the game for about ten years, um, yeah, we recorded th- four albums. So this, actually, five, five, five. Albums. Yeah. yeah. Um, what do you think of the game right now? Where do you think artists are losing it? <sighs> I think one of the biggest qualms I have with young artists is not being able to open themselves up for guidance mm. from older artists. I think there's always going to be that tug of war between young artists and older artists. Young artists, are, some, some of them just don't, not trying to hear it, man. Mm. They're just like, nah, y'all are old. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's some new, this is the new way of doing things. Now, you know, let me do my thing the way I want to do it, you know? Yeah. However, when I remember when I was coming up, as much as I used to think, okay, some of these guys are old, they've got all the ways of thinking or whatever, whatever, I've always opened myself up to be guided, and I realize just how solid that actually makes you become as an artist. In the long run, you realize, actually, I'm very happy that I allowed myself to be mentored, to be guided, because then I wouldn't be this artist that I am. Because, McGee, you know as well as I do, how long an artist actually has in his industry yeah, to stay yeah. at the top. Longevity. At most two, three years Longevity is gone. Is, is, most is. artists that you know who had yeah. big songs in 2009, you don't even remember them. That's why I respect any artist, whether I like the music or not, yeah. longevity. Like I look at the LES, I'm like, fuck, dude, have you managed to do You this? have to respect the LES, bro. We all have to put, our, put some respect on, on the LES' name. Yeah. You know, AKA, AKA for me, AKA is the one artist we actually have to put all the respect on. Yeah. Because if you remember well, from 2010-11, AKA has had a hit song from that year until 2019. That, that's has had at least one wow. or two every single year, bro. That is totally no one in, in this industry in South Africa has ever been able to achieve that. How come you've never worked with them? Um, we've been in the studio together with Keenan, and um, we tried doing. There's one song that he ended up doing with Jay something. Oh, we went in the studio. Oh, I yeah, like there's that, that song. one song. Yeah, no, I, made I, a was, good choice. I was meant to do that song with him actually, but no, I made a good choice. We ended up buying um, some Nando's and a couple of drinks, and just talking a lot of ish the no, whole I'm night. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No. <laughs> so that's actually what happened. Like, we actually had a studio session together. Yeah. We went in for like an hour. We tried playing around with a few melodies, and we we're like, I oh, know, we'll come back to it. And that day, we actually did not record anything. We just we just spoke crap the whole night, Libo JR, yes. and, and, and Sticky Minwan, and them, and, and we just ended up not recording. And then we we're like, okay, we'll, we'll reschedule, and that never happened. So Is KMD today. still a thing? What's that? KMD. What's KMD? Um, it was uh, that group that you were in. You guys did a gentleman's tour. 
Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was me, uh, Musa, Karabo. and Karabo. Yes. Um, no, it was, I mean, it was something that we were trying out oh, at that okay, time okay. Um, for a couple of shows. Uh, we did a few shows together. And I, I mean, I thought it was a genius, genius mm. idea. But I think for me, it came at, at a time when I also had other things that I, I wanted to do by myself. Yeah. And being like, I wasn't going to be able to put my all into the project. So I did a few shows and then I, I dipped out. Donald, man, I got to yeah. let you go, man. Yeah, yeah. We're out of time. But tell me, um, why did you come on the podcast? What are we pushing? What are we pushing? Uh, are we well, we're pushing the album. This yes. is my fifth album. It's called Her Name is Pearl. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're going to get sued, right? <laughs> you the one that's going to get sued, not me. I'm cool. But anyway, Her Name Is Is Out is my fifth album. And uh, and I'm really, really proud of it. It's, t- it's 20 songs. I did 20 songs. That's 10, a lot, bro. 10 house songs and uh, 10 Afro Double and disc or it's just one It's disc. a double disc. Oh, yeah, nice. 20 songs. So we had to put it in, in a double disc. And that's what we're pushing. I do have um, a, a new single out called Mina Nawe. Yeah. <sighs> Man, you need to listen to the album to understand where, where it's, it's coming from. But I have to say it was, you know, one of probably one of the most personal albums of my life. Because this was probably, I would say, my therapy to finally let go. Yeah. Of this love that I've been holding on for so many years. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is this this I think was my way of saying, Okay, now set me free. Like can I just like get over it? Because it's been tough, man. And I have you know, I can't I can't lie. That's the thing with me, man. I'm not scared to be real about how I feel. Mm, you know, mm, I I'm very I, vulnerable. Yeah, yeah, and and the truth is I ha- I have I've I've seen the most, man, where 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 that one specific relationship is concerned and it has impacted my life in a huge way and that's why i can't write about anything else mm. in my music because i have to be honest with with who i am and where i'm at at that time it's so weird man because when i look at you you just look like a guy who just wants to be loved man that's it like loyalty, i mean loved man. and love yeah, you know? yeah, yeah yeah but you know life turns out the way it has to turn out at the end of the day this is not no movie mm. this is not a it's, it's not a fantasy yeah it's the real world and the way the real world works sometimes is it's not how some of us wish it could, you know. Donald, so. I definitely need you back. Um, yeah, we need uh, to talk more. Yeah, because we, we love need to, talk about. you know, dissect the whole industry, yeah. get into more details regarding that. Yeah. Uh, when when can you come back? Because I know you're about to do some international tours as well. I'm about to do a couple of things, man. I think with the, with the release of this album, we're going to Africa a lot. Um, yes. I'm trying to push the brand into Africa. Um, 2020, I'm definitely bringing back the, the Red Mic experience. Nice. Hallelujah. Yeah. Because that's a very big thing for me. I'm trying to, make, I'm trying to take it back, to, take it to Pretoria, actually do the Sun Arena there. Um, 10,000 people. Wow. I hope everything works out. Um, but yeah, man, we're into events now. You know, I'm doing one in Sun City in February, and I'm doing another event in, in Clarkstop in, 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 in September. Every single year, I actually just started this year nice. and um and yeah man i'm excited about the future um, and yeah. there's a lot that's still gonna happen i'm working on um on a on a, on a talent uh competition show, oh nice, nice. um a, a tv show that yeah. i'm busy working on right now i can't really say too much about that but can i be a judge i've always wanted to be a judge in a music tv show yeah are you sure yeah you know enough about music to do that yeah i just want to say you are trash that's <laughs> it <laughs> <laughs> then I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> you never know, man. Because at the end of the day, also with these music shows, it's about the character and not yeah. necessarily about you know how much you know. Yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, man. And um, one of the biggest things that I'm, I'm I've, I've started working on and just kind of coming up with the concept is is the music academy, man. That's oh, that's the wow. biggest one that I you know I I've got a dream of building a, a huge music academy in this industry in, in South Africa because I feel like a lot of our young guys um, are misdirected. Yes. I want to work mo- mostly with the psyche and, 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 and let's, there's a lot of talent, you Dude. know, so I want to focus more in just getting our artists ready for mm. the music industry, for the music business. Because it's important. Yes, it is the most important thing. Because yeah. the way things work in South Africa now, you have one hit, you literally go from nothing, from the dungeon to having so much money, everyone calling your name, you don't know how the hell to handle it. <laughs> <that. laughs> <laughs> like, this industry is crazy. Like, li- literally, you have nothing now, in six months, you're a millionaire. Yeah. And you everyone is calling your name. Would you do piano? Um, 
listen, I think I think we all dance into it right now. I'm one of those people dancing to it. I think it's it's amazing. It's an amazing genre, but I I don't see myself doing it. Okay. Even one song. All right. Cool. Yeah. And I and I know that a lot of people are gonna be yeah. a bit disappointed by that, but nah. Please bring Clee out of retirement, man. We miss him, man. Hey, man. What are you talking about? <laughs> Call him. Find out what's going on. <laughs> this guy. Donald, thank you so much. I appreciate thank you. Thank you, my boy. And so you're going to come back. We'll do something next year. Next yeah, year. we can do something. Maybe early in the, in the year. Yeah, yeah. Then we sit down. But also, I have to say, bro, like, I am so proud of you, bro. Thanks, like, bro. I'm proud of what you're doing. And I know sometimes you probably don't look at this as much. But, bro, you are onto something really big here. Yeah, and you, you're getting some of the most important people to come onto the show. And um, I wish you and the whole team um, luck, man. Len, who you work with again? Um, Len, Len Muleko, Muleko and the ghost lady. And, and the ghost lady. I can't wait to meet the ghost lady. Yeah. You know, I think she's pretty cool. I think she's, she's, I just have her character. I don't know who she is. Maybe you can write a song about her. Yeah. You never know, man. <laughs> you never know. That would be a hit, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, my boy. Or oh, it could it. be a miss. Right. <laughs> I guess she's a ghost. Ghost lady, it wasn't me, it's him. <laughs> it's this guy. <laughs> Love you long time, Thanks a lot, my boy. Sweet, Appreciate man. it, man.